Welcome. We are here live from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Welcome to all the youth who are joining us from around the globe for the third event of the UTS World Virtual Youth Festival 2021. And this festival is actually the world's only youth festival that there is. Um, my name is Julia Govenden. I'm the CEO of United Through Sports. And today I'll be introducing this exciting session where we'll be meeting four outstanding IOC young leaders. We're going to hear about how we can build a better world through sport. For anybody who's needing Arabic translation, please look below. There's a, in the toolbar, there's the word interpretation. Please click that, click that function for translation. So this workshop will actually invite you to also share your thoughts with us right in the chat, which is at the bottom as well. Introduce yourselves. If you have any questions or you have any thoughts you want to share, please do get involved. That's exactly what we want. Everybody together sharing and speaking with each other. If you want to take any photos or any selfies, we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, when you upload them to your social media, please do tag IOC Young Leaders, tag United Through Sports too, and use the hashtag United, the number four, and the future. So to all the youth joining us and all the adults as well, thank you once again. So today's workshop, we're going to share what the IOC Young Leaders Program is. We're going to try to inspire the young generations to move forward towards their own dreams. We have three young leaders who will actually be sharing their own unique stories. And through their stories, we'll see how sport can positively contribute towards social change. So what is the Young Leaders Program? So the program was actually launched by the International Olympic Committee in 2016, and it empowers youths to leverage the power of sport and actually make a positive difference within their own communities. So what happens is there's the support of seed funding from the IOC and a network of mentors. So the young leaders have actually delivered, I'd say over a hundred initiatives, reaching over 30,000 individual participants. And there's been a new edition of the program that's been launched last year in October and 25 young leaders were chosen, three of whom are here with us today. And we also have uh, another young leader who was actually with us last year. Some of you might recognize who he is. We will introduce them soon. So the young leaders is basically balanced in terms of universality and diversity. So there's actually 13 females and 12 male candidates from over 25 countries across the five continents. So today we are proud and excited to be joined by Rohit Maradapa, Jemima Montag, Jesse Niles, and Misa Saibes. So please welcome them. But before we officially open this IOC Young Leaders Building Towards a Better World Through Sport, we would actually like to share two very special messages. So the first one we'd like to share with you is from someone who I would say, and the young leaders will agree with me, is a true visionary. Uh, he's a gentleman that is not only changing lives, but I would say he's changing the world. He's honored with an Olympic laurel. He's also a Nobel Peace Prize winner and an amazing advocate for sport and towards changing the world. So please join us and welcome the one and only Professor Mohammed Yunus. Hello, everybody. Welcome to all of you to this great festival, UTS Virtual Youth Sports Festival Celebration. That's a great celebration. You, can, you have come from all over the world. Welcome to all of you. And you are the under, age, under the age of 18 or less. That's an amazing part. And I believe the younger you are, the more powerful you are. And that's the power you represent. You have enormous power in you because technology that you brought in, the technology that you have inherited is something no other generation have ever, have ever had at this age. You have the power, you have the superpower in your hand and you can change the world and feel it and ask yourself, what are you going to make use of this power? 
if you don't ask that question, if you don't have this answer for that question, this power will be wasted. You will not have any use for it. You will be ashamed. You had a great power, but never used it. I'm sure you'll use it. And that's why we organize this celebration, so that you feel the power looking at each other and to get ready to change the world. Young people are creative people. That's where the focus of this festival is about creativity, it's about education, it's about sports. That's what the combination of this festival that you'll be enjoying. And education and sports, wonderful. But I want to add something else, entrepreneurship. Sports is the beginning of the entrepreneurship. All human beings are born as a sportsman or a sportswoman. Because as soon as we start standing up, we start playing. We do all kinds of games, make up our own games. That's what the natural thing about human being. And human being, being a sports person, is also an entrepreneur. This is the beginning. Sports is the beginning of the entrepreneurship. The sports is about winning, about competing, about creating, about overcoming odds, doing creative decisions. That's what the sports is all about. And that's what the entrepreneurship is all about. So we would like to see how, in, how you turn into entrepreneurs, make things happen. And the sports is a wonderful terrain, a wonderful opportunity to make that feel that you can do that. We don't want to live in the world which is full of global warming, going to destroy us. We can change all, that, all of that. We can create a world of three zeros. Zero net carbon emission. There'll be no global warming at all. We can create that, you and me and everybody else together, here we are. If we put our, this thing in our head that we want to do that, it's not difficult. It's all about thinking, it's all about creativity, it's about sportsmanship, it's about entrepreneurship. That's what we'll be learning in this workshop. And I'm very happy that you have the opportunity to do that. And we can create a world of three zeros, as I said, one zero is a net zero carbon emission. Another is zero wealth concentration. We don't want wealth to be concentrated in a few hands. Then we can share the wealth together. That's what net zero carbon emission and zero wealth concentration is all about. And zero unemployment. These are the three zeros. We can create a new world, a world of three zeros. And once we do that, we'll feel good that we started thinking about it when we joined this big celebration on this occasion. And welcome you all. Enjoy the celebration. And get ready to use your power. Use the power that you have. Don't let it go waste. I'm sure you'll not do that. So learn something during the celebration so that you go back and then start using the celebration, using the power. Don't wait to grow up to be 30, to be 40. That's too late. You can do it now when you're 18, when you're 15, when you're 16. You can do it now. Don't wait for some other day in future. Start doing it today. And that's what gets ready, not only get ready, get into action. And you can do that. So congratulations again. Welcome again. Thank you very much. That was an absolutely inspiring message from Professor Yunus when he talks about the three zeros and he talks about the time is now. I think all of us here today couldn't agree more. His passion is positivity and wisdom. Uh, how can you not be inspired? Um, thank you to Professor Muhammad Yunus for sharing your wisdom with us always. We're very, very lucky to have you here with us. Um, now, let us be inspired by the IOC Young Leaders themselves. And let's take one quick look at a video that shows some of the activities that they get up to. It is truly inspiring to bring about positive change focused on a wide range of issues where sport can make a difference in people's lives. When I first started this project, it was just one small program with about 12 girls. And now it's expanded to a national program, soon to be international. The end is not in sight. Uh, we're gonna keep going with it. And this is a great platform to get involved. So I'd say throw all your eggs in one basket and, and go for it.
The IOC Young Leaders Program has been at the forefront to empower young people everywhere to make the world a better place through sport. That's making me want to go and do sport. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And without further ado, let's meet our IOC Young Leaders. I'm going to pass the floor on to Rohit and the virtual stage is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. So thank you so much to the uh, Kingdom of Riyadh, UTS, and most importantly, Julia, for inviting the young leaders here to run a program on sport and change for youth, to inspire the youth of our current generation, to show them the potential that sport has in social and economic development of our societies. We, in our program today, we intentionally bring forward to you several inspiring and uh, wonderful young women leaders who have not only excelled in sport, but also in the arena of social business. We have, they've brought about social sport projects that have gone big ways in helping youngsters around the world and in their, specifically in their communities go ahead and do impactful work to help them dream big, to achieve big. And like Professor Yunus said, it's something that we want to do today is to inspire you guys to show you the that every challenge that these young leaders have faced today, every challenge in sport or in their personal life, they have used those challenges and those experiences to go forward and build social businesses that can impact the generations to come. And we want to inspire you all, youngsters who are part of our program, to go ahead and make the best of the of the achievements of the experiences that and the opportunities that you have at your doorstep. So, like Julia said, the IOC Young Leader Program has over 100 projects delivered across the world, reaching over 30,000 students. And this is something that is just the beginning. And we believe that, like um, we believe that we long way to go for us. Amongst the IOC Young Leaders, there are 25 IOC Young Leaders part of the new 2021 to 2024 batch. So they're ready to bring a great change. And I'm an IOC Young Leader who did a one-year uh, project called Just Play India, where we reached about 120 students directly doing mentorship sessions for them weekly to help them set goals and achieve substantial goals in their life within a span of four months. And this was during the Corona lockdown. This is all thanks to the Unisports Hub and the IOC Young Leaders Community Support. And today we have with us 20, we have three young leaders who are part of 25 young leaders of the 2024 batch. And we're gonna hear more about the challenges that they face and more about what they bring to the table. So without further ado, I'd like to bring, call uh, Jessie Niels. She's a Canadian young leader. She's been a part of the Nash Canadian national volleyball team. She loves hiking. She loves to spend time outdoors. She's a biotechnology student major and she helps. She also loves dogs. She has a little dog named Pippin. These are some fun facts about Jessie, but more importantly, she's here today as an IOC young leader. As a young leader, she brings technology and her experience in sport to help youth have live better lives. Hi, Jessie. Can you share with us your experience as an IOC young leader so far. Absolutely, and thanks so much, Rohit, for that great introduction. I, uh, as you mentioned, I'm Canadian, but I'm calling in from Frankfurt, Germany today. And my experience as a young leader has been incredible so far. And I think one of the biggest parts that I love is that we've got 25 young leaders from around the world and we can all become connected just as uh, Professor Yunus said thanks to technology. So that's been such a, an inspiring uh, part of the program to me is to work with such a diverse and uh, incredible group of young leaders. That's absolutely wonderful, Jesse. So technology is the way to go, sport and tech, nothing better. So next up, we'd like to bring in another person, another young leader who uses technology. She's an Olympian. She plays sixth at the Tokyo Olympic Games. And this was just her first games. She's a true young leader at just 23 years of age. Not only does she have a sport background, but she also is interested in pursuing the med field of medicine. She's a pre-med student. She dabbles in multiple hobbies, including cooking, piano, and hiking. 
she women empowerment is her forte and she is developing an integrated digital curriculum to empower the women in australia and beyond over to you jemima how has your experience as an ioc young leader been so far hi everyone thank you rohit um it's been a very exciting year i was so thrilled to be chosen as one of the 25 young leaders back in january and i think just to reiterate what jessie said it's really special to be able to sign on to your computer and see faces from all over the world and connect in a year that has been quite polarizing and and during times of the year where each of our countries have felt um alone or like we're facing different challenges it's been nice just to connect with like-minded individuals who are yes we're working towards these challenges and we're trying to build a better world through sport but we've also just been a really nice team of new friends who have been able to connect and support each other in other ways so it's been a special first year and i'm looking forward to the next 3 years as well Rohit I'm going to jump in you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you Jemima for that. So like you said you perfectly summed it up the IOC young leaders are more of a family than just another organization despite the fact that many of us are meeting virtually the covid pandemic has taught us to roll with the punches and really kick off do the best with what we can right which is what UTS is trying to bring to all the youth here today. So so uh community feel and it's interesting to know that I, the ioc young leader program has got 17 commission members 17 of the ioc young leaders have gone on to become commission members who call the shots at the olympic games at, in the international olympic committee so it's a big honor for the ioc young leader program it's great that we have somebody as accomplished in sports such as jemima to be part of the program so thank you jemima next up we have somebody a young leader from lebanon Maisa Saibis Maisa is a PhD student who's dealing with women in leadership uh, science she's in she comes from an architecture background now she make and she's also a national table tennis champion today like all the other young leaders she's bringing together all her challenges her loves her passion and everything to form a social business so could you elaborate on that Maisa Hello everyone, uh, marhaba for the Arabic listeners. Um, my uh, experience with the IOC Young Leaders program uh, is amazing. And um, as you said, we became a uh, family. Uh, this program is helping me personally to um, bring my passion uh, and my career uh, together. So I will explain later on uh, how. Uh, and uh, i met amazing 25 uh, ioc young leaders and i was able to connect with them on a daily basis and i'm looking forward uh, for the next three years sounds great i mean uh, even from the outside like older young leaders such as myself are looking forward to what you guys are going to achieve the magic that you're going to bring to the world in the next three years so um you know you, you guys have spoken about the fact that you are running these projects right you're running these wonderful projects which you've just sort of founded and already creating some impact some ripples in your local communities and societies but we'd like you to really uh, tell all of us explore a little bit into the why what is the reason you're doing this what stirred what instilled in you guys the passion to run this business the social business jessie could you please share a few words on that Absolutely. So my my project I really based it around solving two key challenges that were important to me. Uh so the first one uh is that there's a large population of both adults and children right now who are not getting enough daily exercise. And sport has been such a a cornerstone of my life and I'm so grateful for uh the health but also the community that it's brought. And so I wanted to explore how I could help with this challenge. Uh and something that the pandemic and being on zoom all day has made a lot worse. I don't know if anybody else can relate, but this feeling of zoom gloom where you've been sitting on your computer all day. So that was uh, the first first challenge I was interested in solving. And the second one was that I was looking to uh, help athletes who are ending their sporting careers early because of financial reasons. So I was looking for a solution to help solve these two 
um, problems. So the solution that I'm building is called Ready in Five. It's a social business that brings high performance athletes into live online classes and meetings to lead people through five minute movement experiences that will hopefully uh, help them to not only be more active, but to feel better and be more connected in our online world. So my, my end goal is that the energy and personality that the athletes bring into these sessions will inspire people to become uh, interested in sports and Olympic values. And I'm hoping that the flexibility uh, and income that we provide to the athletes uh, allow them to continue their sporting careers for as long as they'd like. So this, this project all aligns with the UN Sustainable Development Goal number three, which is good health and well-being. So that is my project in a nutshell, Rohit. That's awesome. So you basically took, you're solving two different, pro two different problems with one stone, two birds in a stone. That's a great way to go about it. Zoom gloom something. I think most of us youngsters just definitely feel it, especially those of us who've been athletic, it's just been terrible, but I think it's really noble of you to have to find a way for older athletes, retired athletes to still keep in touch with that sporting bug within them and also continue to give back. That's a great way to get people in. Thank you for sharing that. Mahisa, so you have a very interesting program around your sport, table tennis, but you also brought in your experience with architecture and design to create something totally new. What, what made you want to start this? Why table, why these table tennis boards? Okay, so basically uh, in Lebanon, we do not have table tennis community uh, public spaces. So uh, my idea is to create uh, several ones. Uh, first, I will uh, build um, table tennis, sustainable tables and rackets uh, from uh, leftovers from off-cut wood and from broken tables um, in schools or in some places that are dumped, not uh, usable. So uh, I started uh, with the process, with the fabrication, with my team in order to do them. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, uh, I started to analyze uh, some locations in Lebanon in order to implement these sustainable tables that will be uh, good for the community because I will do a public events on them uh, for girls, for inclusion in sports. So as we can see here on the left, so I started to put analysis on a, a location, my first location called Pine Forest. Uh, it is a public uh, space in Lebanon. So the location number one, um, the table tennis table will be located uh, there. Uh, the tables will be made uh, from sustainable materials, as I said, and with the graffiti on them. So I will be um, mixing my uh, career with my passion through sports uh, for the community. And as, as an example here, I started to do uh, like um, a table tennis uh, racket from leftovers and hopefully to do creative uh, designs, not only um, standard design, so basically, this is my project. So uh, I think that was that would deal with the um, sustainable goal of you would be number thirteen. Number thirteen. Yeah. Sustainability. Yeah. Yes, and also um, because uh, I'm related to promoting girls through sports, so also I would be related to goal number five, gender equality. So all the community. Uh, programs on these table will be also related to young girls. That's great. That's great to hear that you're going to get in, you combine your talents and your interest areas and the why. The why is to get girls to play. It's also to get more of the public to play and why waste things, right? That's fantastic. That's just absolutely fantastic. And Jemima, last but not the least, you have so many talents to your name, so many hobbies can't put my finger on which one you're good at, which one you're not, because you seem to be good at it all. So what prompted you to go and start play on in Australia? So my why really stemmed from my own experiences as a young girl in sport. I was encouraged by my parents from a very young age to try a whole range of sports. And at the beginning, it was fun and easy. And then as I 
got into my later teenage years, I started to face a number of challenges that I thought were only happening to me. And it led to, at the age of about 18, wanting to quit. And it was only by luck and circumstance that I had a very supportive family around me and I was able to continue and become an Olympian and have that dream come true. But I know for a number of friends that I made through sport, they they did end up giving it up. And through my research, I found that one in five women in my state do no physical activity at all and that this continues to decline across the lifetime. Um, and these are because Young women and girls are facing unique barriers, and you can see some of them down on the screen there. So that was my why, to make it easier for the next generation of young women to, so that they don't have to face those challenges that I did, because I've been able to see all of the gifts that sport can bring, not only the life skills that we learn, like resilience and teamwork and confidence, um, but the friendships it leads us to and the ways that we can travel the world with it and of course, look after our mental and physical health. So I've really spent this year looking into these unique barriers like uniforms and physical literacy and cultural expectations of young girls versus young boys. And I've also spoken to a number of real girls in my life and on social media, another power of technology, to, to get real stories and find some solutions. So my idea to have the broadest reach of impact possible was to create a four-week online course targeted at 12 to 14-year-old young women in sport that can be given to their sporting clubs. And it goes around four key themes. So they'll cover female athlete health, they'll cover nutrition, mental health, and inclusivity. And I'm hoping that if as many girls around Australia and then perhaps beyond Australia can hear from these experts in those four areas, we can start to break down these unique barriers, have girls staying in sport for longer. And then we know that this is very powerful for gender equality. So sustainable development goal number five is certainly the one that my project links to, but it also is similar to Jesse's in terms of good health and well-being um, and access to good education as well. So it's in a few different areas. That's, that's just very intelligent. Jemima, I think a lot of us athletes have become a lot more reflective in times of the pandemic, like, or like instead of just running around outside, performing, going to the gym, going to the ground and when a venue is competing, we are now, I think, focusing more on what else we can do, how else we can kind of solve that gap. And as an IOC young leader, I think that's your duty to do. And you're doing tremendously well at that, I must say, because my project Just Play India, which we run here, also deals with life skills with a bent towards empowering young women to stay in school longer, to take up professions and to pursue careers of their choosing instead of what society just pushes onto them, right? And uh, what we do, we use mentors. We get volunteers. Every three to four children have an individual volunteer. So that sometimes becomes a little cumbersome, but I think you have used technology. You've leveraged it in a beautiful way by recording your classes and putting it out there in four modules which covers female health, mental health, nutrition, and inclusive spaces. Fabulous. You are also, in fact, touching upon bringing equity in terms of uh, access to people with, like, differently able people, right? Inclusive spaces. So Yeah, so the inclusive spaces one covers, um, I want girls of all body sizes and abilities and colors and genders um, to feel that they have a space in sport as well. So in the fourth module for inclusivity, um, the girls will be hearing from about six women experts who are very diverse about how we can build more inclusive sporting spaces so that everyone sees themselves represented in sport and as if, yes, yeah, sport is an option for them, not only for one cookie cutter image of what an athlete should look like or be like, um, it's for everyone. Absolutely, that's beautiful to hear. And I think it was, Wonderful. Each of you had a very clear why. Each of you had a very clear why. It stemmed from something you truly believed. Mayasa was, there are no public table tennis spaces in Lebanon. Jemima, we just heard her why. For Jesse, it was about just that relentlessness of athletes who were just stuck without a career or without being able to contribute back to sport after they were done with sport. And also a lot of us who were just gloomy at home, especially the youngsters who who are growing up literally in this pandemic world, right? First, second, third graders. 
they have not possibly known life with luncheons where you know you're messing around in school you're running around you're playing three sports a day or four sports a day like jemima's parents allowed her to so at least using tech we, they, she was able to kind of get kids up and running up and moving which i think is beautiful so i think we also have some questions coming in we will get to them in a second but then jesse you you accomplished quite a bit in just about uh, less than one year of the program but i'm sure you faced a lot of challenges a lot of struggles along the way especially in the challenging times we are in so did did something really bother you were there major obstacles that you faced if so what were they yeah so i think it, one of the big challenges is that i've never done anything like this before it's completely brand new and so um that was a big challenge for me and it's been a, a learning process but what i've done is really approach this building this project much as I did uh, my sport. So a couple key things that I did was uh, treat it like an experiment. And so this helped me take a little bit of pressure off of having it perfect from the beginning. And so um, that's something that I did when I played volleyball, not, not feeling like I needed to make every touch perfect, but just um, trying new things and, and seeing what would happen. So that was one key thing that's helping me overcome this challenge of learning how to, to build a tech platform. Uh, the next thing is building a, a great team. And so being part of the IOC Young Leaders Program has really helped me um, learn from my peers, but also connected me to some of the expert uh, expert sessions that we uh, get the, the pleasure of, of learning from and then our mentors as well. So I don't have this feeling like I need to do this all on my own. I've got a great team. And then the last piece that's I think really important is to focus. I've fo tried to focus on taking small steps in the right direction as opposed to feeling like I need to make these giant leaps in progress. Um, and this is just how I practiced and got better uh, in volleyball as well, as I've put the reps in, put those small little important uh, pieces. And before I know it, I was playing volleyball for the national team for seven years. So I'm trying to apply that same mindset to building uh, my project. Yeah, that's wonderful. So not only did you not do things that you haven't done before, like building a tech platform and li the likes of it, but you're also doing a lot of other things. So there's a lot of things you're doing, things you didn't do, things you're going to do, things you are doing. You're also a master's student apart from playing volleyball and then building this program. How do you balance it all? Yeah, you're right. You know, that definitely has been another challenge. I'm, I'm studying and working and planning a wedding this summer. So I've got uh, lots of time, lots of things to, to keep me busy. But, um, you know, I've really made this project a priority. And so if it means early mornings and late nights, um, I do that, but I also keep reminding myself to take care of myself because that's important as well. So um, I, I do it because I'm passionate and, and really excited about it. So yeah, thanks Rohit. Thanks for that uh, point on passion and everything. And congrats on the wedding, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you. So a quick, quick point was you mentioned something very interesting which is the IOC Young Leader program this time. Uh, this time around has really catapulted into making every young leader a real social business and not just somebody who delivers a one day project, but more of a sustainable social business. The IOC Young Leader program has got uh, some very interesting masterclasses on human centric design, on peer to peer learning, on fundraising and more. And this is something that's helping these young leaders build the kind of projects in the nature and the depth of thought that they have is because of the peer-to-peer -peer learning that they have. And they're also got this mentorship opportunity where older young leaders, such as myself, we have uh, teamed up to work with the current young leaders in terms of helping them ideate and create their uh, program. So it's, it's more of a brainstorming and peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, which makes it all the more fun and brings that family aspect into this. So uh, Maisa, you're coming if you come from a place like Lebanon, which has gotten four IOC young leaders so far, which is a tremendous accomplishment, but also it, it, there's a lot of economic turmoil and political instability that the country is facing. Amidst all of this, you wish to have gone in and forayed your project. 
have how has that been how has your a lot of people are asking us what is the biggest challenge that the ioc young leaders have faced questions are coming in so in response to that what would you say first of all uh, lebanon has faced this year a lot of economical and social problems uh, so we people mentally uh, are not well uh, prepared to, to face these problems uh, but I never give, gave up on uh, my project. Uh, first, uh, that my project is related to materials and materials prices are increasing every day. So um, this is why I, this is my main challenge uh, now. Um, but uh, as I said, I never gave up. So the hard part is the fabrication part and experimenting several uh, prototypes of uh, sustainable tables and uh, rackets. So this is why I showed you that I started with the uh, prototypes in order to see the bounds of the ball, if it is good on the wood, uh, what type of wood uh, shall I use uh, for in order for the bounce of the ball to be uh, more accurate on the table uh, for the community, uh, because uh, this is a main a major problem. If the bounce of the ball is not good, so the tables, uh, people can't play on the tables well. Uh, and especially that in public areas, tables, um, so the sun and the wind, I must also take care of these external factors. Uh, so especially, as I said before, that locations are also my main challenges. I need to choose my location wisely. And uh, this is why I'm analyzing the surroundings if uh, there are uh, a lot of flow of people uh, coming to those areas, if those, those areas are uh, leftovers. And um, yeah, so, and basically uh, the people targeting uh, people is so also important uh, to uh, be more inclusive for all kind of people, uh, small people, young people and older people. So the locations are really important in order to uh, place those sustainable tables for uh, different target groups. Fair enough, Maisa. I mean, uh, like India is a country where table tennis is big. I see people changing their rubbers, just the rubber for their racket every three days or something, right? And they're very expensive. And I'm sure yeah. even to play a decent game, you need to factor in so many conditions. So kudos to bringing about a team. So. Something I think we can take away from that is you didn't work alone. You had to bring in this set of team, people who help, who are good at table tennis, people who can design materials, people who can design the cover of the material, graphic design. So it's just fantastic. Um, and from Holland, I hope that answers your question. And uh, there are some questions coming in regarding the IOC Young Leaders Program and who can join in. You can definitely go out onto the olympic.org and you can find information on the IOC Young Leaders Program, you can just Google it. And please feel free to reach out to all of us here today. You can reach us out on Instagram. You can reach us out on LinkedIn. We're all there. So we can definitely do that. Jemima. All right, yeah, we can see you now. So um, go for it. What were the challenges? Everyone wants to know. Pandemic, pandemic, how, how? What did you do? Yeah. Yeah. So. I thought I would shift, we've touched on a lot of challenges about our projects themselves and also what's going on in our countries. Um, the biggest challenges that I've faced in the last 12 months have largely revolved around sport. So I thought I would give everyone my top tip of how an, a special acronym that I use to overcome challenges that my sports psychologist actually taught me just before the Olympic Games. Um, so for those who don't remember, the Olympic Games were actually cancelled and postponed by 12 months. And it was the first time, sorry, not the first time, but since World War II, the first time they've had to do that. And that was, of course, because of the pandemic. And that was a big challenge that I faced because I'd waited maybe 15 years for this childhood dream to come true of becoming an Olympian. And then suddenly, you know, due to something well beyond my control, it wasn't going to happen. And... Initially, my response to that challenge was to view it as a threat, a burden, something unfair that was happening to me that I had to shoulder. Um, and I wanted to sort of give up and feel sorry for myself. Um, but of course, this wasn't a very helpful response, but it's a common response. 
um, because whenever there's a threat, and this is human nature, we run away and try and, you know, that's the safe option. Um, but whenever we're trying to achieve, achieve great things, like all of us on the call are, we need a way to overcome those challenges. So the acronym that I was given is ACT, A-C-T, and it stands for Accept, Commit, Take Action. And you can apply this to any challenge that you face in the future, whether that be a personal challenge, something in sport, something in education, something with friends and family, something in a sport and social business. So, you, continuing with the example of the Olympic postponement, um, after my initial reaction of being quite upset, I had to move on to acceptance. So, during this part, um, for example, I met with my coach and we spoke about how we could reframe from an unhelpful way of thinking about it as a burden to a more helpful way of imagining the postponement as a bonus amount of time where I could really do extra training and be even more prepared for the Olympics. After accepting the extra 12 months and reframing them in a positive light, it came to committing to the new goal. And I always find that goal setting makes me extra motivated and committed, um, particularly when overcoming a challenge. So I said, okay, I want to set a really exciting goal of being in the top 10 at the Olympic Games. And that's something that scared me, but I knew it was within reach. So even though I was ranked about 16th in the world, I thought 10th is going to be an exciting goal for me to commit to. Um, and as we've already said, I came sixth. So I did better than the goal, which was cool. And then after you've accepted and committed, you have to take action. And not only once, but take small repetitive actions day in, day out. And that's really where we see progress on the sporting field, but also in really every area of life. So with all of us in our social business projects, you know, we've faced different challenges and along the way we've accepted, we've committed, and we've continued to take small actions um, every day until being at this point of the year where we can finally share with you where we're at. So you can certainly use the ACT tool to overcome any challenge that you might face. Thank you. Thank you, Jemima. That was beautiful. You didn't just come six places from 16th to 10th, but you just smashed that thing. Game six, that's beautiful. You also said act, take consistent repetitive steps, right? In the end, that's something, I think it's a big message to all you youngsters out there, not just planning stuff and not just dreaming, but it's important to take action repetitively, consistently every day, day in and day out. Thank you for that. Jemima, also the last time we spoke, she said two things, which I'd like to uh, repeat if you don't mind for the young audience here. She said, guys, you guys have got, you have to be the DJ of your own life. Anytime you got pressure, don't feel it like it's coming from above you. Don't feel pressure under, but rather feel it like it's pushing you from behind. Pressure is pushing you forward. You got no pressure. It means you don't care. So I think that's a beautiful message uh, that... As Jemima shared, Jesse, is there something or Maisa, something from your sporting moment that really sculpted you, shaped you to take loss, to take and face obstacles? Is there something of that nature? I'll jump in here with uh, with my thoughts. You know, there was a lot of times where, like you mentioned, Rohit, in sport, I would face or feel that pressure. And so uh, it's interesting now that I've actually retired and I don't, I'm not actively competing anymore. Um, I still face pressure, but in different different ways, or I still feel pressure sometimes. But yet I can still use some of those techniques that I learned in sport, uh, mindfulness, breathing, um, good nutrition, taking care of myself to help me to deal with the the pressures, I suppose, of, of everyday life or all of the the goals that I have for myself right now. So that's that's one thing that now that I've had some time uh, from active competition, I really am so grateful for that experience and that training. Um, so yeah, uh, Melissa, how about you? Uh, yeah, I faced a lot of pressure, especially when I was at university studying architecture. So overnight and uh, I I need to train every day uh, for the table tennis competitions, and I need to be 
always rank number one. So it was really pressure, but I managed uh, to do both. So uh, the key point is to believe in yourself and uh, always uh, say, uh, yes, you can do it. Can do it. Absolutely. And um, th there's another question coming in, which I think we can entertain. Julie from France has asked us, what is the best advice that you received in terms of getting your projects going or maybe even in life? Like, what's the best piece of advice? Oh, I'll jump in here quickly. I think um, one of our expert sessions very early on was about human-centered design. And um, this was a great way to a great piece of advice and a great way to kickstart my brainstorming because we learned that um, as the designer of the solution, you can't expect that you have all of the answers to your target audience. And rather than projecting all of your ideas onto them, you actually just need to ask them what they need and what, um, you know, what they might see the solutions to be. And not only is that easier for us, but it's actually much more effective. So I think for any of the young aspiring leaders on the call, um, taking that human-centered design approach where you actually step into the shoes of your target audience or actually interview them and speak to them and say, what solutions can you imagine? How can we make this easier or better for you in some way rather than assuming you know the answers? That was the best piece of advice I got. That's amazing. I think some of us have learned that the hard way through trial and error, but always ask, always ask and find out what people need before you just assume it. Would uh, Maisa or Jesse, would you like to jump in on that? Sure, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, I think a really interesting piece of advice, uh, I actually received it from my dad and, and my dad is a great role model for me. And so I'm really grateful for his mentorship, but he's the one that planted the seed about treating treating this like an experiment. Um, and I was doing some reading and I think we all know Google is one of the most innovative, successful companies in the world. And you might be interested to know that out of all of their projects that they work on, over 96% of them fail. And so it's, it was just kind of, um, it was really inspiring to me. And uh, so it's okay to trial and error, like you said, Rohit, and to try new things. And um, maybe they don't, won't go the right way the first time, but you learn something and can uh, make it better the next. So I think that's one, one good piece of advice that I've received. Amazing. I, I think I just uh, went through that something like Jeff Bezos said that 70% of businesses fail. So if you go in knowing that that's the reality and not the exception, you're good to go. If you know, go in thinking, hey, I'm going to fail, and then you fight to succeed, and then you win, and you're like, oh, crazy. That uh, kind of helps to set your expectations and try things out, absolutely. Uh, Dukilan Jeevamani, another IOC young leader, yeah, he's asking us something that we're going to get right to. He's asking us what uh, each of us want to achieve in the next four years, but... Um, I'd, I, I think we should stick to more realistic things. What are we going to achieve in the next six weeks and six months, right? You guys have come, done some tremendous, got some tremendous pro progress in your respective projects. And despite all the things that are going on in your personal lives. So um, I'd like to ask you each, what are the next targeted steps you're going to be taking to take your project and take the impact forward? Maesa, would you like to go? Yeah, of course. Uh, first, I will talk about my um, my work um, with the um, Lebanese Table Tennis Federation, uh, and uh, also we are doing a project with the International Table Tennis Federation. So these projects are related to promoting girls through table tennis. Uh, the project is um, called My Gender, My Strengths. So from now to the next six weeks, uh, I am working toward uh, that, uh, promoting girls uh, in sports. Uh, in schools. So these projects are also uh, helping me to uh, learn more and to implement them also in my IOC Young Leaders project. Um, so I'm learning from all the sides, from my personal side, from my work side, and also from the IOC Young Leaders program in order to uh, reach uh, my goal to do uh, a good project for the community, for the Lebanese community that will have the inclusion in table tennis. That, that's beautiful, that's beautiful, Maisa. So you've got your plan set, mapped out. Jemima, what have you got in store? 
Yeah, so actually tomorrow I'm going for a walk. With, I'm going to go for a walk with an exciting woman. We're going to walk her dog together. Um, she is in charge of field hockey um, for young girls here in where I live in Victoria. And I'm going to pitch my play on idea to her and see if she would like to sign on her local girls hockey team for a bit of a pilot season next year. So hopefully my walk goes well. Um, I've already also signed on a small girls football club with another lady. So I'm just hoping to do a pilot year in 2022 with a few local girls sports clubs. And I've set up a survey for them to take at the beginning and the end of the year to give me good feedback. And then we'll try and make it even better the following year. Sounds great, Jemima. Um, I think we're in a little bit of a similar space because uh, since Dukhil and asked, I'm going to chip in as well. Uh, I'm going to chime in there, which is uh, my program, Just Play India. We also are, uh, we launched our next program last week uh, on Tuesday, and we're going to have the first session of our mentorship classes on Tuesday evening. So excited for that. Stressed also because our audience has slightly changed. We used to have younger girls and boys from 8th and ninth grade. Now we're doing 10th and 11th. I don't know how they're going to react. Much bigger, much older. So let's see how that goes. Jesse, what's in store for you apart from getting married? We know that. We know that you're doing your MBA. But what yeah, else? So next steps for me, uh, earlier this year, I ran a great pilot program and, and learned a lot. And so my next uh, step is to get my website and that tech platform up and running and then to put together uh, a great team of athletes. So in, in that pilot phase, I had a great opportunity to work with a Canadian Paralympian. Um, and I would love to involve more Paralympians in my project. So that's going to be the next phase for me is to, um, to have all different sports, all different, um, you know, a whole variety of different athletes uh, involved in the program. So those are the two key pieces is the tech, tech platform and then building the team. Yeah, I think um, both very complicated tasks. So I wish you all the best in getting the right people, getting the right platform going. I can imagine how dif difficult that is because uh, Julia and Anne from UTS have been working very hard to get the UTS platform up. So I think you should, should definitely hit up and get in touch with them on project planning since they clearly always, they always over count the time, estimate the time so that they can get in any get avoid, avoid any hiccups that come their way. That's beautiful. And um, I think our participants have been very participative. They've all shared their favorite sport. And we have, like, amongst the people watching, and we have so many different sports. I think one, one person, Lion, has said basketball twice. I don't think that counts as two words, Lion. I think, I, I think football wins. Marissa and Dukilan all like football. There's running, judo, CrossFit. So I think one thing that we can agree for sure is that amongst the infinite number of sports that exist in the world, there's somebody who's a national Sepak Takraw player here from, I forget from where, but um, there's somebody from Sepak Takraw, I think Minaj from Pakistan. So that's just absolutely fantastic. The number of sports that we have opportunities to partake in, to contribute to and learn from. Uh, Maisa says table tennis, Maisa. <laughs> so it's just brilliant. We would encourage each and every one of you youngsters watching this to go and pick a sport, play it, pick many sports, pick one, doesn't matter. Go out there, enjoy it. Know that what you do matters. Despite where you come from and who you are, everything that you bring to the table matters. And clearly the results are coming in. Soccer, football is just winning by a mile. There are a lot of words coming in for football, but just make sure, just make sure that you play a sport, know that you matter, bring your voice to the table. And there was a reason that we had very, very strong international women mentors here today in the form of Jesse, Maesa, and Jemima, is to inspire each and every one of you, despite where you come from, who you are, what boy, girl, or whatever, doesn't matter anything, just matters that you have a voice and you bring it to the table in a constructive manner. We hope that you really enjoyed all the questions and all the 
conversations that we've had this evening, as much as we've enjoyed presenting them to you. I'd like to hand it to Julia to, for organizing this wonderful event. We hope that the UTS workshop kicks off big time this time with the, uh, with the support of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We, we, we know for sure it's going to be amazing and we hope many of us can be there for the opening tomorrow. So, uh, Julia, would you like to say a few words? Rohit, thank you so much. I just want to thank um, all of you, uh, you know, Jemima, Jesse, Misa. Thank you so much for contributing. Uh, we've been captivated, to be honest, by everything that you've been saying. On behalf of the uh, Riyadh Local Organizing Committee 2034 and behalf of the UTS family, we're so grateful and we're so inspired by you. And uh, I just want to say everybody who's joined us today, thank you so much. It's wonderful to have these fun interactions. And as we said before, and as Rohit said, find us on social media, connect with us, have a look at the IOC Young Leaders Program, get involved, see if you would like to join. Um, and if you don't want to join, you can still do projects on your own. You can still find ways to, to sort of contribute back to your community. There's always something we can do. As Jemima said, you know, let's act now. Let's be the DJ of our own lives. Let's say yes, let's say that we can do it. Um, shukran to everybody. We will have in one hour from now, our next session, and we'll be with the uh, World Anti-Doping Agency and the International Testing Agency. So to all the athletes, all the youth out there, join us, because this is gonna be an important session as well, and you don't wanna miss it. So thank you, young leaders. Thank you to the IOC Young Leaders Program and to the UNIS Sports Hub as well. It has been an honor and an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all once again. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity once again to take your time and have this lovely interaction. Thank you again to UNIS Sports Hub as well for organizing this and helping us run, work through our presentation today. Have a great weekend and a week to come. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you so much.